Most sports talking heads make predictions, then hope you forget about how wrong they were. But not Mackie and Judd. Write this down. This is the big leagues, where we own our terrible predictions. Write that down. And keep track of each other's batting averages. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. Yep. When are you guys going to admit that you were wrong? Zolgad. Zolgad. Oh, hold on. Hold yeah, on a second. Dexterous. It's coming up. I can feel it. I can Way feel that time the is coming bangles. up. Well, every Wednesday, we put our reputations and careers and livelihoods on the line. We are the only show in America that actually statistically keeps track of our incorrect predictions. It's called Write That Down. We've got two different franchises of it now. We've got the classic Write That Down here on Mackie and Judd, where we use batting averages and home runs. And then we have the football-centric version on Purple Daily. You can find that as well. Three predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. And if you want to participate like Christian is about to, you can send us a message through the Score North app, and we will get you on the schedule. Thanks to our friends at Federated Insurance for powering these predictions. Federated is all about powering your business and helping take it to new heights through risk management resources. Find out more about all the information, or all the resources, I should say, and people that can help your business at federatedinsurance.com. Remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect Write yours. Uh, it's also uh, the day here today where Jim Harbaugh is in town for a lengthy finalist interview with the Vikings. And so we will get to any and all reaction later in the day on both Mackie and Judd and on, on Purple Daily. But we wanted to get these Write That Down episodes out so uh, so you guys could make fun of us for incorrect predictions. So uh, let's start with Judd here. In the accountability session, I need a ruling from you on this second one. I need I need honesty from you. So the first one, you said Vikings officials will use the words collaboration or inclusion no fewer than five times in the introductory press conference. Ugh. So I actually found a transcribed document through the Vikings mm-hmm. media site. Yep. And I did a search for all forms of collaborate, collaboration, include like, you know, I, anything that would start with I N C L U. And uh, it was far fewer than, yeah. than yeah, five. I was hoping you wouldn't do that much work on that. So you might screw it up. But no. yeah, you're right. In fact, I don't even think they used the word. I couldn't find inclusion anywhere in the transcript. Mark Will's statement wasn't long enough. That was part of my problem. I was hoping that he yeah. would talk more. Because I felt he would say inclusion or collaborate a lot, and he barely talked. Yeah, he kind of. And he was asked one question. Yep. yep. I, I was very disappointed. I should have gone and asked more about collaboration and inclusion. He, you should have. Yeah. Mark, talk about just talk about um, both those things: collaboration and inclusion. Now, you also said Doug Peterson would get an interview with the Vikings, but I believe on one of our shows yesterday, you reported that there was some sort of interaction. There was interaction, but uh, I was, no, it's wrong. Because I I was saying he's going to get, yeah, I do not know of any circumstance in which he like zoomed with them. Okay. Which is the very least. So I think that they talked to him possibly and he like, gave them the parameters of his desires to have a big say on the roster, but I am going to self-report that as being wrong. Okay. So it was, it was kind of an informal feel out discussion or, or, or it was back channeled. I, I don't know. Yeah. What I do know is that the honesty and integrity that I bring to, uh, to a show that really has <laughs> collaboration and inclusion consistently is it's heartwarming. It's very noble of you to, it's very heartwarming to, to see like what this. I bring to this show. All right, I had a bunch of stuff come off the board here. Most of it bad. I said the Chiefs would beat the Bengals via fourth quarter comeback. Ugh. The Almost. wool the Wolves would beat either the Suns or the Warriors. They came close. They they played tight games there, but it didn't happen. Mm. They fought. They were shorthanded. So the Vikings would hire one of these three to be their next head coach: Byron Leftwich, Lane Kiffin, or Doug Peterson. Remember remember when Lane Kiffin was a thing like two weeks ago? Oh yeah, it was fun. Somebody. What if he still? What if he still is a thing? You never know. What if? What wow. if? If the NFL were WWE, Lane Kiffin's music would hit at the very end of the Jim Harbaugh. Or was that process. playing yeah. there to see Doug? Could have been. Who I, I think we were informed lives in the same general vicinity. Could have been. But yeah. I don't know that for a fact, so or, I was still wrong because that's what I do. I admit. <laughs> Thanks, Judd. I really yeah, thank you. Joe, I, uh, don't buy how honest I. 
I also said P.J. Fleck would interview. I said this like a year ago. P.J. Fleck would interview for an NFL head coaching job before February 2022. Not. This when Tom's Tom had a report on the Lions at that time, right? Back yeah. back a year ago, that P.J. might be on the Lions before yeah. Dan Campbell got the job. So. I did redeem myself a little by saying Dofa Mensa would use the words collaborate and culture at least once each at his introductory press conference, and he did use both those words. He used culture multiple times. He used collaborate, I think, twice in my, in my twice or three times. So we'll count it. Uh, listeners, Kirk said the Bears would hire Jim Harbaugh as their next head coach. He said that a year ago, and man, there was some flirtation there. And then D. Lindall said Tom Brady will start a game at quarterback for the Vikings at some point. Now, if he comes out of retirement to play for back. fellow Michigan man Jim Harbaugh, then we will definitely dig this one up for you, D. Lindall. And then Declan, you said Bailey and or Ronda Rousey would return at the Royal Rumble, and Ronda Rousey yeah. returned, and then she won it, right? And she wins. She won. Yeah, she won. Love the WWE just coming up with fresh storylines like Ronda yeah. Rousey and Brock Lesnar winning the Royal Rumble. It's, Big congratulations it's to them. Infuriating. It is infuriating. Like I, I went, I watched that on tape delay, basically, and I went to bed on Saturday night just fuming with rage. To what my girlfriend was literally like, why are you so upset by this? Yeah, she's and right. I, I, I'm with your girlfriend. I was, I, I was and, and she kind of is a wrestling a, not too from afar. Series. She she kind of gets wrestling, so she kind of knows she's, it. But she's kind of a wrestling nut from afar. Like that yeah. means she's probably not that into wrestling. No, she is. She watches it and she knows <laughs> no stuff. And she's into total diva. She was like, she does know stuff about wrestling. Just but she was like, you are it. way too upset about this. It's a bad. It, it's become, according to both of of you, a bad TV show. Stop watching the show. It's awful. Yeah. So yeah, don't dude, watch it anymore. Just be out. Be out. I love it. She, you know, She's right. Yeah, you know, I'm kind. I'm, you know, when it comes to like doing chores around the house, like I'm kind <laughs> of into it from afar. Yeah. Far, yeah. But, I like really. cleaning the bathroom from afar. <laughs> from it's afar. just my thing. I can yeah. fix things from afar, <laughs> which means I call a guy. All right, so Judd, uh, we actually we're, we're taking some points off your batting average here yeah. because of the Doug Peterson prediction. So it's actually Declan at 400, Judd at 375. I'm at 286. Listeners. Have not had a hit yet this season. One home run each for the three of us. Listeners still looking for the first home run. Uh, and you can see the career stats there on the YouTube channel. 19 home runs for the listeners leads the pack. 203 hits for Judd leads the pack. Let's get Christian in here. He's our guest listener predictor. He has a badass setup there. It, uh, you said it's a flight simulator setup, sir? Yeah, I'm like, besides the Army, I go do fly school. So I got to you know, do some hours in the flight simulator. It's not the certified one, but I had to get the training in it. So what needs to happen for us to throw Judd in there at some point, no. just like with no. zero training, no. just, uh, uh-uh. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you for your service. So Christian, yeah, thank you for your service and for your awesome thank setup you, there for the YouTube audience. And so appreciate here's, what's going to happen. We're going to go around the room three times. We'll start with Christian over to Judd Declan, and then back to me. Uh, the predictions must be quantifiable, and that's pretty much the only rule here. So start us off however you want, Christian. All right, I got, I got a short term one, and I got a, two long terms. So awesome. my first short term is Rodgers will be traded to the Steelers, and then Cousins is going to the Niners. Ho, 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 ho. So it's a parlay. We're parlaying these. Yeah, things. parlay okay. going. Right that's a down. hell of a parlay. Rodgers to the Steelers, Cousins. Whoa, and, and the reason I picked Steelers is because I guess this morning Kubiak is getting hired by Denver. And yeah, yeah. That is, I don't think, I don't think Rogers would like to work for Kubiak. Do you think Cousins would? Not that you know, if some, like Cousins doesn't really have a choice. Like if he gets traded, I don't. There's no like no trade clauses. But do you think he'd want to work with Kubiak again? I don't know. <sighs> so maybe maybe Denver's off the but board. But he'd be for working. Cousins too. But I, I think he would be working with Hackett and Kubiak. I, I think is going to be QB coach and pass game coordinator. But he won't be in charge this time, yeah. so it actually makes more sense there. Also, you know, Cousins put up, you know, at least the first three quarters of the year, which it's not shocking. Some of the best stats of his career. You know, he was he wasn't turning the ball over. He had some fourth quarter comebacks, and 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 so I'm I think he likes working with Kubiak, but I like that prediction. Write That's this good. down. All right, Judd. Alex Goligoski will be the next current wild player to sign a contract extension with the team. Okay. So we, we saw 
Greenway get a contract extension a couple days ago. They are or ha- have been doing this basically since I think the springtime. So Declan Goligoski mm-hmm. is going to be the next current player to get a contract extension. Interesting. Interesting. Because he's going to sign for Write less. Down. Dex, do you do you disagree? I do. I, I do think. You, do you concur? I do not. I think that would solidify that Matt Dumba's fate would be traded. Like I think that I think that would basically put the writing on the wall that he'd be moved at the I, deadline, which I don't, or not the deadline, the off season. Uh, and I don't think they are in. I don't think they should be parting with Matt Dumba either. So what you think and what know. they do. It's Very true. Different things. It's Declan. true. It doesn't matter what you think. Garen's disagreed with me on this show. He did. Um, A couple wild predictions for me. I'll put this one out there. I I was talking a lot about the goalie splits between Capo and Cam Talbot. So the Wild play 10 games in the month of February. They have 10 games in the docket. I will say Cam Talbot and Capo Kakinen will have at least four starts each. Okay. You see what I'm doing here? So if if one of these guys starts basically, mm-hmm. they're going to kind of like, more, an even, like an even split, basically. Is what yeah, so saying. it'd be a six and a four, you know, because there's ten games, so someone will still get the at least one more, but or there could be an injury. But I will say, Cam Talbot and Capo Cocknan will each start at least four games in the month of February. Mm-hmm. Write that down. Very specific, but yeah, here for that. Write it down. You like writing things down. All right, uh, write this down. So five straight wins for. The Wild. Wild. And they've got, when, when's that Chicago game? Thursday, tomorrow. So, so tomorrow night. Tonight, then, right? Is it, tonight? is it tonight? Yeah, I'm almost positive it's tonight. Oh, and then the All Star break here. Yeah, tonight. I, I'm only co host of the hockey show. I should know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tonight. Yeah. <laughs> There's no idea when oh. the games are. <laughs> and, then, and then they get uh, Winnipeg on the other side, plus a couple home games against Carolina and Detroit. So here's my prediction. Excuse me. I know Carol- Carolina is one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference, but. Mm-hmm. The current five-game winning streak for the Minnesota Wild will reach at least eight. And wow! So I'm, I'm saying they will beat Chicago and Winnipeg on the road, and they will beat one of the best teams in the East, Carolina, at home between now and basically Valentine's Day. So they will, they will. So the prediction is they will win their next three games: Chicago, Winnipeg, right. Carolina, and they will have. Uh, They'll add three more to the five games of eight game winning streak for the Wild. If they win nine, I still get the, the point. Wild? I'm just saying they'll get to eight and then whatever happens after that. I mean, then it's Detroit. They should beat Detroit. So, but I'll, I'll, Detroit's plucky. Yep. Detroit's coming. Hockey Town, right? Write this down. Yes, Hockey Town. We got the State of Hockey versus yeah. Hockey Town in a couple weeks. Great marketing battles. All right, back to Christian here. All right. So, this is, this has been something I've been looking for. So Alex Boone has cursed on the show total three times. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I want to say, write this down. He will curse three more times by the end of regular season. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's funny is, and you don't know this, Christian, but we also just got done with Purple Daily. Write that down. Uh-huh. And uh, the guest listener predictor, Garrett, also made an Alex Boone cursing prediction. As oh, one of my two. God. Yeah. So you're saying by the by the end of the regular season or yeah, by the beginning? Yeah, he's, he's gonna be frustrated by the games more okay. than anything. That's what he okay by the end of just the Super Bowl. Drop. So yeah, he's got to curse three times. Okay. Wait a second. By the Super Bowl or the regular no, 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 season? Regular, just this is this is the, the next year. Like this is yeah. the coming. Oh, you're saying okay. I think this is an easy check down for you. This is a yeah this is yeah. A punt. This is Kubiak check down. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I think Boone like just does down. it, just does it to infuriate Declan. So he has to edit out of the radio yes. version. Yeah, exactly. yeah. His reaction is is priceless. <laughs> All right, Judd, back to you. Your I love the people like love Declan. It, going it's crazy. becoming a bit I, in the comments. You can just see me going. Oh. And I love <laughs> time stamp to the right over here. That's if you wonder what I'm looking at. I'm like, oh, fourteen thirty. Like I make a mental note to edit the f bomb. And I always yep. smile because it's just outstanding. Because he yeah. he's he's getting more and more savvy about how he drops in the curse word. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right, uh, write this down. Next season will be Andy Reid's final year as Chiefs coach. Okay. Uh, 2022 will be Andy Reid's final season as coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. Off the record. Do you think it'll be his decision? Uh, yes, I think he will. Now, now they might have a conversation, but I do think that Andy, he will we can do resign. things the easy way, yeah, or the hard way. 
I, you know what? He's not young. He's, he's had, he's had enough turmoil. Certainly. I just think it's going to be it. And I mean, heck it's been, well, it, it probably has not been great, but it's been very successful. It's only going to get harder for him now too. Now they can still shuffle Mahomes cap around, but yeah. like as guys get paid, like they've kind of missed their window here. Not that they're not going to win. This one loss again, was a huge loss. Yeah. They probably, sh- that was probably should have had another defeat. one in there somewhere. Yep. Oh. Write this down. All right, Declan. All right, my second wild prediction. Uh, my number one boy, Kevin Fiala, enters yep. tonight's game against Chicago on an 11 game point streak. Wow. You have to go back. I know there were some games canceled, but the last time you did not register a point, I believe, was December 16th, was the last time in a game Kevin Fiala is not at a point. So I will say his point streak will continue tonight against Chicago, and he'll make it 12 straight games with at least one point. Damn, Daniel. All right. Yeah, your guy is your guy's definitely playing for a big contract here. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Write this down. I'm going Timberwolves here for my last couple of predictions. So write this down. The Wolves they've got some winnable games on the schedule here the next couple of weeks. They got Detroit for a couple, they've got the Kings for a couple, and then a, a couple other East like the Pacers are in there. So write this down. Over the Wolves next 7 games beginning with this first game against Detroit. They will go at least 4 and 3 over those 7. Okay. At least 4 and 3. So they won't have some weird letdown. And I think I think they have a legit shot to to climb to like the maybe the fifth seed with their wow. schedule the next month and a half. That's off the record. But uh like the they beat the brakes off the Nuggets last night. The Nuggets are fine, but I don't know. The Wolves have had the Nuggets number, so so on the record though, they'll go at least four and three over the next seven games. Write it down. Write this down. Okay. All right, back to Christian here. Your third and final. All right, my final. So I think we all know that. Well, Judge knows this. Like next year, Vikings could just dump. It will be a dumpster fire. New year, crappy year. But I think they're gonna make a JJ number one purpose. Like they're gonna make make plays through through JJ just to keep him happy for a year. Yeah. So he's gonna end up being the number one wide receiver in the NFL for 2022 on total yards receiving. Total yards mm-hmm. receiving. Love it. Yeah. That's a good, very solid prediction. Yeah, he should. And it, it, there's so many questions to be answered about who the quarterback's going to be, the coach, obviously, but whoever it is should be featuring Justin Jefferson. Yeah, I think, I think they're going to make it a point to just keep him happy for the year and, you know, pay him at the end of the year. Like, all right, stay with us. Yeah, Love it. That's well, Christian, prediction. since you are you got this gigantic, life-changing platform here right now, is there anyone in your life you'd like to thank that brought you to this pinnacle moment? Definitely my wife, who came from Puerto Rico in seventeen. And literally sat down next to me when I was crying in the TV on the Miracle Pass. And then we lost to the Eagles. Uh, uh, let's see. And then I guess my, my, my dad, his, he PCS. The story why I'm a fan of Minnesota is like we PCS to Minnesota when I was a kid. I was, uh, I was uh, 16. And that was five year. And that's when we became a fan, like 2009, 2010 year. And I was like, I guess I like football. And then I don't know, Vikings. It's been Called, you know, soul crushing the entire time. So. I always feel bad when, like, <laughs> wish I, I didn't like football. Yeah, when, when when fans come in and it's kind of like, and we've got fans in Europe and stuff, and like, how'd you become a fan of the team? And well, I just, it's like a like a random circumstance brought me to the Vikings. Like, you realize that you could have had a random circumstance bring you to like the Patriots, and for instead, real. for real, <laughs> yeah, like he, and, and it was like my, it was my uh, my last year in high school. I was like six, I was sixteen, seventeen, and like mate. Spring, my dad is like, "Oh, we PCS into Minnesota." I was like, "To me, where is that?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we ended up in Minnesota in the middle of the winter. I'm like, "Oh my god, what is what is this?" <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, Christian, awesome. great work. Thanks for your service, appreciate and uh, we'll you. get you on again sometime. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank all you. right, there it is. Write this down. Guest listener predictor, Christian. <laughs> Stuff. All right, Judd. All right, my third and final write that down. The Atlanta Braves will be the next pro franchise in the four major sports to change their nickname. The Atlanta Braves will be the next um, franchise, I believe. They've they've basically they've, resisted yeah. it very hard, but 
they're the Atlanta Braves. Like, I don't think that there's a lot to, to be like, oh, no, 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 no. So I, I think that there will be enough pressure from inside the sport at some point in time where they will be the next team to change their name. What do you guys think of the Commanders? The Washington the, Commanders. I dislike the uniform look more than the name. It looks like a college jersey to me. Uh, I'd have to look more at the uniform, I guess, to have a, I look, a strong it's, take. It's a little weird. I don't hate the name. Because it, it just at times takes time to adjust, but I saw the jerseys and I thought that looks are like a college look. I don't like the college look for. I'm a, it's it's hard because I don't know that there would have been any name that I would have said yes. Oh my gosh! Like every new name is weird because yeah, you, you don't get you don't get renamed teams in the NFL, right? When, when, when's the last time we had right. one? The Texans. Well, they were an yeah. expansion team. They're expansion. I don't know the Titans. I guess you got to go back twenty five years. Is, the the which Oilers is not became bad, the Titans, which is not a terrible name. But yeah, I'm. I don't like the the new um, trend towards oh. college looks on pro teams. Uh, then the well, they moved right. Like the Hornets became the Bobcats. <laughs> the Bobcats. The Bobcats yeah. were an expansion team, but they were ex- New Orleans expansion. had moved and kept the oh. name, and then they became the Pelicans, and yeah. so the Hornets became available for the Bobcats. The Bobcats is a terrible name. That was yeah. a stupid name. The Bobcats. It's a plural, and I hated it. The Bobcats. Pelicans, I actually like. Crazy Bird, the Pelican. All right, Declan, your final prediction here. I also have a baseball prediction. Look at us. We talk baseball Write on this, this show down. sometimes. You guys tell me, actually, this is a fair prediction in the spirit of write that down and in uh, the current state of Major League Baseball. So AAA and Minor League Baseball is still going on. Mm-hmm. Like the St. Saint Paul Saints schedule will still follow. So write this down. You guys tell me if this is fair. The St. Paul Saints will play 30 games before Major League Baseball plays its first game. Yeah. Is that fair? Totally fair. fair. Absolutely. Totally fair. Okay. Is that a home run? Probably not because this is a con- very contentious We just line. don't know. I think it's – I don't think so because – like I, if I probably upped it maybe. Like if I said maybe 50. When does the season start for the Saints? Early uh, – April. like April 4th. Like So yeah. they have like 23 games it's in April. It's a good prediction. It's a solid prediction. Yeah. At this point, it's it's very unlikely – that baseball starts on time, Major League Baseball. Baseball that Tuesday, and I know you're going to be shocked by this, but according to Jeff Passan, it didn't go well. Weird. And we're like a week. Spring training would ordinarily you know be what? starting in like two you weeks. You know what, baseball? Fine. Don't don't start. I got football to follow. I got okay. hockey to Honest follow. Honest question for you guys. Wolves. I was on a text thread with some friends yesterday who are diehard baseball fans, and and we, t- we sort of discussed this. If baseball never came, like baseball is my favorite sport my whole life up until like very recently. And I made a living covering baseball beats as a writer and got my start in the media industry, calling baseball games, high school and amateur games and you know writing about the twins and stuff. So like yep. baseball is how I got my start. If baseball never came back, I wouldn't feel like I'm losing a huge chunk of my life anymore. Here's I wouldn't, th- I would not be devastated if it, you know, it's going to come back. I'm just saying, but like right. I, I'm. I'm kind of done with them right now. But the Saints here is great. I'll I'll go to games. I love CHS. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll say part of my thought well, on this too is I'm so disgusted still from a from a sports standpoint, disgusted yes. like yes. at the Twins being 0 and 18 in their last 18 playoff games. It is so pathetic and embarrassing and the way that this front office has now re-entered another rebuild period. It's just like the whole thing is just collaborating. <laughs> There's inclusion. <laughs> what more do you want? They're a family. That's true. I, so to, to bring Same. even more uh, girlfriend takes to the table, when I like went on my first date with her, she said, so I asked, like, what is he really passionate about? I said, well, he was really worked up about the state of the twins. And I apparently went on a very passionate rant about how much the current, this was like maybe a week before the season was you, still so going she's, on. She's saying you went on a rant yes, on your first about date how much her? about how much the twins just infuriate me, just absolutely make my blood boil. <laughs> Uh, and in general, I, I mean, I'd be sad if baseball never came back, but right now I'm so checked out on it. I'm so checked out and it, and it just infuriates me. We're arguing over the stupidest of things. How far into the date did you wait to start bitching about the twins? This is a first date. And why did she? Yeah, this was a, that was the first. Day. Um, I, probably like 30, 40 minutes in. And the funny part was <laughs> I, the, 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 the funnier part was I then lined up a second date while on the first date to a twins game. <laughs> 
So then our, oh, our sure second time date, she's like, oh, she I love, yeah, does be she great. like baseball a lot? She does. She loves baseball. It's been to like a ton of ballparks. Yeah, but, she's uh, uh, she's she's kind of a baseball nut baseball from afar, from a, from from a, a distance. <laughs> she doesn't really care about baseball, but she loves Sandy Koufax <laughs> from afar. Uh, yeah. uh, God. Anyway, All go right. Saints. Right this down. Saints. Is, it, is it back yeah, to me now for the for the final prediction? Oh yeah, we have another prediction. Yes, Phil's last prediction. Okay, write this down. <laughs> Anthony Edwards will be the MVP of the Rising Stars game. Jade McDaniels and Anthony Edwards are both representing in the yeah. Rising Stars game. Yep. I don't even know what the format of this anymore. I just know those guys are playing yeah. in it. And no way. Ant, Ant will be the MVP of that I game. I didn't even know that they named one. So I think Ant... Way to go. He's, he's going to be clearly one of the two or three best players in that game. And I also think he probably feels like he belongs in the actual All-Star game. I'm not saying... Like, there's other guys that de- that deserve it in the Western Conference more than he does, but I think he probably looks around and sees that as a chance to prove, okay, I don't belong in this Rising Stars game, so I'm therefore I'm going to dunk on everyone and score 40 points. That's off the record. Wiggy, baby. Wiggy, All-Star game. He's in the All-Star Starting game. So, so somebody who, like a rapper or a TikTok star, got him in. Did, did you guys probably, see I, I don't know. that story? Probably. Somebody started the campaign and, mm. and now there there's there is shockingly serious concern about about the fans weight in the vote because they basically have <laughs> a guy they don't want playing in the all-star game no, he's starting all- in the it's, all-star it's, game it's a fake honor like we're literally celebrating it's like a TikTok it's been star. eight years and he's finally competent no. as an nba it's player some dude. let's put him in the all-star game yeah, it's it's some the, dude on TikTok. It's, the, it's the k-pop star bam bam yeah what, guys familiar ba- with bam bam I'm not. Is he from friends? the Flintstones? Yeah. Are they friends with uh, Wiggy? Pebbles' boyfriend. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I am I very familiar Google with Fred, search. Wilma, Barney, Betty. There was. A, I was at a sushi place last night. There was a lot of K-pop playing, but nothing of Andrew what is Wiggins. Uh, Problem. It, it's 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 Korean pop music. Okay. Yeah. It's bat a very flip? like it's a it's a genre of, of music. It's very popular. Them? We'll send you a couple playlists. Yeah, we'll send you some K-pop. I might like it. You don't know. It's true. I have an eclectic taste. Judd is all in on K-pop from a distance and from, a, from afar. What if I like K-pop? Yeah. <laughs> you know afar. what? When we're done today, he's a I'm K-pop nut. K-pop. From afar. From afar. From a distance. From afar. <laughs> all right, those are your write that down predictions here. Write this down. We'll, we'll be on Harbaugh Watch later on today and and keep you guys posted there. So also, if you missed it yesterday, it's uh, it is becoming the most listened episode ever on Purple Daily. Alex Boone with a behind the curtain look at. Jim Harbaugh as a coach, what went wrong in San Francisco, what was it like when things were going right. He's got all the insight on Purple Daily. If you missed it yesterday, check it out. And uh, we'll see you guys later today, maybe tomorrow. Reckless Speculation Thursday, tomorrow. There's so many things the next 24 hours. We'll see you guys. Ah.